All right, in this video, we are gonna learn how to put background images of, let's say, people's faces onto a bubble chart that looks like this. Uh, so it's gonna take two bits. The first bit is gonna be about how to do uh, definitions in SVG for reusable graphical components. And then the second part is how to apply that to D3. So first off, um, we have an SVG page right here, or a page with an SVG in it. Usually when we're doing D3, we're writing everything via code, uh, but I just thought it would be good to start off by looking at the raw SVG and understanding how everything gets applied. So we have a ton of circles here, and then we have a single lonely rectangle. And if we look at our code, if we scroll down, 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 we will see those circles and those rectangles right here. But the odd thing is, look at all of this other code that is inside of our SVG. Um, we have a marker, we have this linear gradient, we have a radial gradient, we have another linear gradient, we have a pattern, an image, but none of those things are showing up, despite the fact that they are inside of our SVG. So in your SVG, you can have something called defs, definitions. And these definitions become reusable components that you can use again and again and again. Um, so you can apply a radial gradient or a linear gradient to a, a circle or a rectangle. Um, you can add a marker onto a line. You can have a pattern be the background of an object. So, you know, this marker is supposed to be uh, for a line, but maybe I'll add a line in later. So if we look at, let's say, this linear gradient, the way the linear gradient works is it is given an x1 and an x2 and a y1 and a y2. So um, the x1 is 0 and the y1 is 0, so that's the top left and x2 is 100% and y2 is 100%. So it seems like this starts in the upper left-hand corner and then moves down to the lower right-hand corner. Linear gradients, these gradients don't even matter because you're rarely going to use a gradient because they're always very unattractive. Um, gradients get stops, which means this is the color right here um, that is at 0%, and this is the color that is at 100%, so your gradient goes between this color and this color. Now, if we look at this gradient, we see that it has a name, neon gradient. If we look at this next gradient, it has a name, circle gradient. These are both IDs. They should be unique on the page. Now, what we want to do is, right now, this first circle has a fill of red we can see it's a red circle right there. I would love it if there were an ugly gradient in the background. So what we can do is we think, oh, we know how to refer to things by IDs, right? ID means you get the little hashtag thing, you get the pound symbol. So let's just take neon gradient and say fill, use the ID, neon gradient. You're so excited that this is gonna work. You hit refresh, and it just turns black, doesn't work at all. The thing that doesn't make sense about how to use definitions in SVG is you need to type a URL around your selection. Neon gradient, get the thing that has an ID of neon gradient. Um, we're gonna call it through this URL. It's not even a function. Um, why, why, why? I don't know, but it totally works. So anytime you create a definition, um, you can use it for the fill, you can use it for the stroke, you can use it for whatever. It just takes the code that's inside of here and applies it to your object. So I had a circle and I said, hey, take the fill of that circle and fill it up with whatever's in neon gradient. And it said, okay, I'm gonna take neon gradient and I'm gonna fill it in with that circle. Let's take this other gradient here, this radial gradient, circle gradient. It's the same thing, starts on one color, ends up on another color. URL, circle gradient. Refresh, 
oh look, it's still just as ugly, it's very bad, it's no good. Um, we can also use this on the rectangle, URL, circle gradient, even though it doesn't fit. So we just get a little bit more green out on the sides. So generally you're not using gradients. Generally what you want to use SVG defs for uh, are background images of circles. Because if we have this bubble chart here and we have a ton of different people's faces here, we know how to insert images through SVG or we know we could look it up. But it's not practical to have to crop all of those images and then resize them and it, it's a train wreck. So um, what we are going to do is this. We've seen the radio gradient, we've seen the linear gradient, then there's something called a pattern and a pattern establishes what a background can be for a shape. And inside of this pattern is an image. And this image points to a file called snow.jpg, which is just, let's see if I can pull it up. Yeah, so it's just John Snow. Um, there are all of these other things here, height, width, pattern content units, the height and width of this are supposedly one, preserve aspect ratio, blah, blah, blah. This, all of these extra bits are pieces that you need. You don't need to understand them. Just know that it makes the image show up correctly. And you say, oh, great, let's see this image show up correctly. And I say, okay, um, we have another ID for this pattern. This pattern is John Snow. Let's just put it in here. So for the fill, I want to use this pattern. And this pattern is simply an image that is one by one. So I save, I refresh, and there we go. Jon Snow, beautiful. Um, I can also use this on a circle. Now, we saw that this image is square, right? And we just put it in a rectangle and it seemed to work fine. What's gonna happen when we use it in a circle? What's gonna happen when I forget to save? Oh, I have fill here twice. All right, so I'm setting both of these to have the fill of John Snow, both of these circles. And they both look wonderful. Let's make this one even a little bit bigger. Let's go from 50 to, let's say, 150 radius. So the magic thing that will happen is as you make your, in your circles larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, uh, your image will scale up to fit that. Now, the only issue is you need to make sure that your image is high enough resolution so that it doesn't look terrible and pixelated. As you can see, our image is nice and small. Um, but if you were going to blow up someone's face to be this large, just make sure you have a big enough image. Um, okay, so now that this works, um, we are going to split to a new video and then we will learn how this applies to D3.